Last we left off. And it's been like years since I've seen you guys. I should say last left off with you. I believe you guys had talked about the quantum numbers and uh, Jessica did electron configuration, right? We, we did quantum numbers and then electron configuration, Jessica. Is that correct? Or am I lying? That's right. Good, good. So let me share my screen. Okay, so electron configuration is also called electronic structure of the atom. So there's a couple of things that you guys want to take in consideration. So we've talked about the quantum numbers. What are the quantum numbers again? And how many are there? Are there? Four. There's four. What are they? What are they called? What are the uh, the abbreviations you use? N and L, and then like um, the, there's there's two M's, right? M L and M S. That is correct. So what is the spin? I I didn't hear what you said. What was the question? N. And is it like the, the energy level? It's the energy level, which is also called the what? The shell. Uh, it's called the shell. That's that's the slang term for it. But in terms of the n, actually represents what? What quantum number? Is it hot mass Principal quantum number? Quantum number. Uh -huh. what, what was that? What is the Principal quantum number. Principal quantum number. So this guy is the principal, which is also like you said, the energy level. I have to make sure you guys get the. The terminology so when you guys take those standardized tests and they say principal quantum numbers you're like we didn't talk about that okay so and then the l let's plug it in is l for lucy And Jessica, don't you be typing the answer. I won't. Uh-huh, sure. I'll give them a hint. It starts with an A. <laughs> is it the angular momentum? That is correct. See, I, honestly, I don't, I don't really even understand what that means, to be honest with you. I've never understood L. You took physics, right? Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> I understand, Michaela. I understand. I'm pretty sure everything I learned in that class is what I taught myself on YouTube. Okay, so angular momentum. So you know what momentum is, right? Yeah, I mean, I know what angular momentum is. I just don't understand how it correlates to this. Because you're, it's actually, when you start looking at the quantum numbers itself, there is a calculation. And so those numbers actually, they do, they're the integers that you be that you would multiply by to get your value for that angular momentum. And so when you get into, if you guys, if you're, if you become a chemical engineer, you have to take PCAM. And then you'll actually get into the, the, the true mathematics of it, uh, a lot more calculus based. Um, and and so then you'll actually see where mathematically where it comes from. And so, but it, it's defined as the angular momentum, uh, even though we use it to represent our shell, right? So for simplicity. Okay, ML. I think on it. Oh, I, I think my um, internet just cut out for a second. My bad. The magnetic. Give me one second.
Okay, so we have the magnetic quantum number and then the MS. And it's not a degree. Anyone? Okay, you have to say it non robotic. See, they call the magnetic spin or just spin, the spin quantum number. Okay, please stay. <laughs> yes, piece of cake. Okay, so, so when we were talking about the quantum numbers, right, you guys, uh, you're feeling comfortable with that? You got a pretty good understanding? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, good. So so you guys got a pretty good understanding of, of what the quantum numbers and what they're, they're standing for, sort of, right? So when we talk about, let's say, the principal quantum numbers, right? So the principal quantum number basically means the orbital is, or the energy levels are expanding. So that kind of talks about like, Let's say we're talking about the S shell, right? So if we have the one S shell, that's gonna be smaller than the two S shell. And then that's gonna be smaller than the three S shell, right? I mean, not smaller. Yeah, smaller than the three S shell. And then so on and so forth. You guys understand that, right? That growth. Yeah, no, maybe? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now, an electron in the 1s shell is going to be more attracted to the nucleus than an electron in the 5s shell. And that makes sense too, right? Because, you know, those opposites, positive and negative. So the 5s is a lot further. So it's going to have a weaker attraction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So also, So also we know that the S is lower in energy than the P and that the P is lower than the D and the D is lower than the F of, of, uh, elect well, of subshells in the same um, level, right? So like the 3S is lower than the 3P and the 3P is lower than the 3D and the, you guys understand that too, right? Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. And uh, let's see. And then the last thing is, is that the electrons are kind of, they're lazy and they don't want to use a lot of energy. So they're always going to fill up the lower energies first. So they're going to fill up the lower orbitals first before they go to the next level. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Okay. So let's say we're doing carbon. How many electrons does carbon have? Is it six? That's right, it has six. So since there are six electrons, your first two are gonna be in your 1S. Your next two are gonna be in your 2S. Then you're gonna have one in your 2P minus one and one in your 2p0, okay? 
So if you guys see by it, it's, it fills up those lower orbitals first and then goes to the next orbital. But here, it each, if you have multiple orbitals in a subshell, such as the P has three orbitals, it's going to put one electron in each of those orbitals before it goes back to so up the other one. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, good. So what, is, what will oxygen look like? Anyone? So does that have eight? I don't have my periodic table on me. Okay. Yeah, Is it that... has eight. Okay, so it has eight electrons. So how many are going to be in the 1s? Two. What about the 2s? Also two. Okay, so then what are we going to do up here? And the 2p. So like first you would put all the up, upward facing ones all the way across. And then just put it, the downward one in the very left side. Please take. Yes. Mm -hmm. No? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, so let's see. Now, if I wanted you to identify this guy, could you give me the uh, uh, quantum numbers for this, for this particular electron? Well, N would be two, right? Okay. What about L? What What is the L value for P? L equals one, that is correct. What about ML? Is it just positive L because it's uh, upward facing? It's upward facing, it would be positive L, but it would be, because remember ML can go from minus L to L. So it can either be one, minus one, zero or one which represents each of the orbitals. So which one is it in? Oh, so it'd be negative one? That's right, negative one. Oh. OK, and then our MS. That's right, it would be a positive a half. because it's facing in the positive direction and each of the spins are half. Okay, so that would be the quantum number for that particular electron. Piece of cake? Yeah. What about this guy here? Our N. N. 
Minus two. Okay. Our L. That is correct. L is zero. Our ML. So if ML is going from L minus L to L, and we know that L is what in this case? Zero. Zero. So then zero. Our ML must be negative one, zero, one. For the 2s, I mean for the s, because our l can only be zero, right? So if we're going from l to minus l, in this case, l is only zero, right? Mm -hmm. And then what about the spin? It's negative one half. Okay, piece of cake? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so this is what I want you guys to do. Tell me that you really understand it and I'm not just. Yeah, I was just mixing up the rules for the uh, ML and MS. I get it mixed up all the time. Okay, so let's do, let's do cobalt. So can you uh, draw the electron configuration for Actually, not cobalt. Let's do uh, manganese. Manganese. Mn. Will somebody put the electron energy level shells up here for manganese? I mean, I can try, but okay. I'm on my laptop on the mouse pad. It's not even a real mouse. <laughs> It'll look really bad. Dr. Henry, I have a question about electron configurations. Yes, ma'am. Um, so it's like a distant memory from when I was taking 1P. Um, I remember something about, so oh, here, let me try an element, um, like scandium. So you... For scandium, you have like these numbers on the side, which is like two, eight, nine, and two, right? Yep. And then all of these represent like the energy level, right? Or it was it was I like dreaming <laughs> during that? No, 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 so, no. You're right. You're right. And we will okay. we will talk about that. I promise we'll talk. Okay, because I didn't go over that with them just because okay. I still wasn't sure about it. Okay. Yes, but you know, okay. you're right. So each one represents a different energy level. Or, okay. And All we'll right. show you how to dissect that energy level. All right, just, just making yeah. sure, because I don't want to give them the wrong information. Oh, no, this looks so bad. <laughs> doing a great job. OK, I think mean, that's it. Wait, manganese, right? Yeah, Mg. Manganese, not magnesium. Okay. I mean, that's it, right? Manganese, is manganese Mg? Oh my gosh, I was reading it wrong. I kept looking at the word, but I was just re reading it as manganese for some reason. Oh no, even more. Okay, Michaela, we're a little dyslexic sometimes with these elements. They shouldn't have named them so close.
<laughs> that one looks so bad. I gotta fix it. Okay, is that it? That is it. That is correct. Okay, so you see. So Mauricio I want you to give me the quantum numbers for this guy Alexandria I want you to give me the quantum number for this guy. Like right on the screen or like just yep. tell you? Just write them on the screen. Okay. And Matt. I'm having a little trouble. I want you to give me the quantum number for this guy. Okay, so you can't write on the screen, I'll write for you. Keep telling me, Mauricio. Where's everyone else? Where's Taylor and uh... and your sister and Alberto? I do not know where my sister is, but I mean, she's not home right now. We're like. We technically live together, but normally only one of us is home at a time. <laughs> and what about your sister, Andre, uh, Alexandria? Uh, she's supposed to be coming in the morning. She work, uh, she's not, she isn't working right now. <laughs> but she did this morning. Tell her I'm gonna come after her. Okay, I'll tell her. Oh, Alexandria, when you go to annotate too, um, there should be an option for like text if that's easier for you to type it out on the screen rather than like write it out. Oh, come on. You miss, you're missing with all my fun here. I mean, it's just the tutor in me is coming out. <laughs> and Matt, you're orange. Mm. 
Does my n equal four? Is that right or am I wrong? Yes, your n is four. That is correct. Okay. Are you there, Matt? Yeah, I'm trying to get my laptop up and running because I can't annotate either on my phone. Okay. Actually, you can. You just have to press in the corner and it'll pop up a pencil. Mm. Or you can just tell me. You want to know the orange one that you circled? What that is n correct. equals for that? Yep. I want to know all the four quantum numbers. So I want n. Oops. So n would be two. And then p would be my value of l. So what would that be? So that that's going to be. Is that going to be? Um, one. That is correct. And ML. So that's going to be. Negative two or would negative, negative half? Would it be negative two? Because remember, ML can go from L to, to or minus L to L. Okay. So then, um, so then it would be zero. That's right, it would be zero. Yep, because this is minus one, this is zero, and this is one. Okay, and MS? A negative half. Okay, piece of cake? Yeah. Hey, Alex. I need help with my M's. Is my L right? I think. I don't see your L, what is it? You have oh, to, um, oh, like there? Yeah, yeah, oh, there. yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. So your ML is, so if your L is zero and ML goes from, ML goes from, it could be from minus L to L. So zero? No. That's right. Okay. And then your MS is uh, the same thing? No. Spin. Spin can be either positive or negative, but what? So it's zero still or no? no not zero. Negative one? Nope. Look, look at everybody else's spin. Wait, I gotta move this. Oh, neg uh, negative one half? Negative no, it's a positive? Half. Okay. It's a negative a half. That's well, correct. What makes it negative or positive? If it's going up, that's a positive. Uh, yeah. If it's going down, so it's if, a negative. So if you had circled the first one, it would have been positive? That is correct. Okay. Okay, questions, concerns, cash, credit. Okay. okay.
Okay, so we have electron configuration. So you guys are familiar with the electron configuration, right? Where we, right? Yeah. Let's say we'll do uh, manganese, right? So we'd write 1s, 2. Can't you just use any one that isn't one of those two? What was that? Can't you just use any one that isn't one of those two? Manganese or magnesium? No, I'm going to use that one because because it always catches you off guard. I remember you in two uh, A. Same thing. Two P six. Three S two. Three P six. Come on now. And 4s2, 3d5. Okay. Piece of cake. Yeah. Or we could do it the short way, where we take the core, which would be the noble gas, that is the closest to the end or closest to that particular element. So in the case of manganese, you have manganese right here. So the nearest noble gas would be, uh, the nearest noble gas to the backside of it would be argon. So then it would be argon for S2 and 3D5. Okay. Piece of cake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So now there are a couple of exceptions. And so let me kind of explain, explain to you those exceptions. So one of those exceptions is chromium. So what we would expect for chromium is argon or S2, 3D4. Okay. So the electrons, the way that they, they behave, they don't like to leave a shell, let's say a shell um, empty if they have a choice not to. They would prefer it to be like half full or um, so in the case of half full, so there's five orbitals in the D shell, right? So if we go back, come on. So there's five orbitals in the D shell. So what it would prefer to do is it will take that electron from here. Put all the guys in. So this is the, what chromium would look like. I should show. Oops. So this is what we'd expect chromium to look like, right? So where all of these guys are full, the 4s would be full, and then we would have four electrons. So it's actually lower in energy for it to sit there and put a, a half full shell in place 
rather than just leaving this here. So it's going to borrow this electron. It's going to take this electron, borrow it, and it's going to put it here. So chromium actually will be argon 4s1 3d5. Okay? Are you with me? Or did I lose you? Um, actually, I kind of had a question. I know it depends on the periodic table that you have, but um, mine has those like little numbers on the top left. Oh, no, mm -hmm. top right. Sorry. I don't know why I have to go back to elementary school, le learn left and right. Um, but those are like the number of electrons in each shell, right? At each, at each level. Yes. Each energy level. That's correct. And so let's talk about that. So that's a good way of sitting there and looking at it. By looking at your periodic table, most periodic tables have that now. When I was growing up, they didn't. So again, if we look at chromium, right? So this here represents that first energy level. So there's two electrons in the, the one energy level. There are eight electrons in the two energy level. There are 13 electrons in the three energy level, and there's one electron in the fourth energy level. So if we write this out, so that would be in the first energy level. So that's 1s2. There's eight electrons here. So that's 2s2, 2p6. So two plus six, that's equals eight. That's my eight. And then for the third energy level, it's three S two, three P six. So that's eight. And then three D five. And then the last energy level would be four, S one, that one electron. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know why I wrote 13 there. So that should be. So that's three and that's four. Okay. So, if we look at silver, go clear. Okay, here's silver. So what would be the electron configuration for silver? That's the first energy level. This is the second energy level. This is the third energy level. This is the fourth energy level. This is the fifth energy level. Would it start out with 1s2? 1s2. Then? Then 2p2, or I'm sorry, 2s2. 2s2. Then? 2p6. 2p6, so that would give me my eight there. And the third energy level? 3s2. 3S2. Then? 3p6. And? So that would be eight. Two. 
Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I see. Wait, wouldn't it go uh, 4S2 next? Nope. Well, it, it technically, it would go 4S2. But, oh, you just start writing the Ds in this yes. level, huh? But okay. you want to write your D for this level since it's full. So it's 3D10. And then 4S2. Four P six. Four P six. And so that's Wait. eight. So then how many must be in the D then? Four. Wait, shouldn't it be four D nine? Because it's one to the left. So it's right here, right? But mm -hmm. remember what I just show, showed you. It's going to either be oh, yeah, it's going to put the one completed. over there. Mm -hmm. So then it's going to be 4010 and 5S1. So it's another exception. So the reason we put the 3D10 before the 4S2 is because we need to keep the S's you, together. So if you're using, you want to keep, it's not that you want to keep the S's together is that you're using these numbers to determine how many electrons are in each uh, level. Okay. Right. And so this helps me keep track of the 4S. So that's two plus six, that's eight. So then we must have in the D, we must have 10. Okay. Okay. Are you with me? You understand? Mm -hmm. Let's see. So let's see, uh, let me find one that's a little bit screw up. Okay, so you'll see that goal is the same way. I think it's, it'll be 6S1. It'll fill these guys up and then this guy will get filled. Okay, questions. Okay, so palladium. This is also an exception. So what is that one gonna look like? One S one. One S two. Okay, what about on the 2S? I mean, the twos. 2S2. Two. 2P6. Two okay, so that would give me the eight. What about threes? 3S2. Three P six. So that so is this where we need to put the three D ten again to equal right. eighteen? That is correct. Okay, and then what about the four S? I mean the yeah, four S. Four S two. 4P6. So that would be eight. So then we need to do. Would it be 5S2? 5S2. 
Um, no, it wouldn't be. It would be, uh, it's going to be 48. Is it going to be 48? I don't know. Because we have eight right now. So, so 4010. 4010. So it actually takes, so this guy, so palladium actually takes the electrons from the 5S and it, it puts them into the 4D. Mm. Okay. And the only way that you would know that is by looking at the numbers that are provided here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there any particular reason why one element does that when another one doesn't? Um, that is actually a very good question. So there, there is reasons why, but they're more mathematically based and also in terms of energy stability at certain levels. Um, and so this class, we're not gonna cover it, but there is reasons why they, they do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you'll notice like nickel doesn't do that, right? And so you'd assume, well, why, why doesn't nickel do it when palladium does? They're in the same row, shouldn't they? behave in that same column, should they behave the same way? But they don't. Right. Yeah. So a more advanced level chemistry question, I'm guessing. Yeah, and it also, like as you start getting to the outer shell, right? So it'll start mm -hmm. doing things because it wants to be, those electrons, remember, the further away it is, the weaker the pull is, right? So if it's in a, in a lower energy level, it has a stronger pull than it would be if it was in a further energy level too. So that'll play a little bit of that part, but there are limitations. I have a question um, yep. about like the valence electrons. So like for this particular one that we did right now, would mm -hmm. we look at that last level, that four level? Yes, for, for oh. valence? Yeah. So, well, yeah, in the sense, what you would look at as, as valence, so what would be valence in that situation, these guys wouldn't be considered valent. They would be part of the core, right? So all of these would be part of the core for the palladium, but the last 10 would technically be valent. So that 4D10 would be valent. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So, and then talk about that. Okay. So, Ofbom basically means to build. And so that concept of how we're, we're doing the 4S2, building it that way. So that's, that's the Ofbom principle. So that process of doing it is considered the Ofbom principle if it comes up. Or you see it on some standardized test. And again, you always want to go lowest energy level possible. And uh, you guys are all familiar with this. You've seen it before. So this is just reminding us that these guys are going to be your S. This is going to be your P. This is going to be your D. And here is your F. And, and actually, these guys here are your first ones here. They belong here. This table's screwed up. So these guys are really in the F orbital, and these guys are actually in the D orbital. So this is just showing you the correlation of us drawing the arrows up and down. So the, the orbital diagram, uh, energy level diagram, compared to just writing that 1s1 in this case. And it shows you how you're, you can translate and figure out the quantum numbers based upon that. 
Okay, questions, concerns, cash. No questions? Okay, so let's talk about valence electrons. So valence electrons are electrons that are gonna be in the outermost shell. Um, and they're also considered to be the ones that are gonna be involved in reactions, okay? So those are the ones that are freely available to be involved in reactions. Core electrons are the ones that are in the innermost shell. Usually they're stable. Your core electrons are gonna be your stable core. So they're gonna be your noble gases, uh, all the way up to your noble gases are going to be what your core would be. So like, uh, you know how we write our, the short, the short notation of, let's say, let's do, so let's do, let's say copper, right? So copper is going to be, For short notation, it's argon, AR, four S one, three D ten. Okay, so in this case, copper has one valence electron because this guy has a complete shell. So it would consider to only have one valence electron. And that would still be considered part of your core. But usually this is your core right here. Okay. Are you with me? Or did I just kind of confuse you? Can you say it one more time? Sure. So, Normally, your core would be all of the electrons that are written as your noble gas. So that's all of the, the ones that are before it. So it would be all of these guys, here. all of these electrons. So those would be your core. Then your valence electrons are going to be this, normally these guys. But under this circumstance, since the 3D is, a, is in a lower energy level, it has a 3 B and it's completely full, it's not considered to be valent. The one that's considered to be valent is the 4S1. So this electron is going to be available to be worked work with. Okay. So in this case, you have one valence electron. Okay. So let's say we had manganese, right? Mn. And this is in the case for copper. So if we have manganese, be clear. So again, we have argon. And I should get you, remember, get in the habit of writing down what the element we're looking at. So manganese, so we don't think it's magnesium. They screwed us over with those names. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. So we have 4S2, 3D5. So how many valence electrons in this case? Only two. No, actually, in this case, what? Because it's going to be all, all seven. Because this 3D is not whole. Not whole? Oh. That is correct. Okay, so that's part of the reason why when we get over here into the transitional elements, they're a hot mess. And so we try to avoid them for the most part, but really these guys, that means that these seven electrons are gonna be available for, um, these uh, seven electrons are gonna be available for, for reacting. So we look at the ones that are kind of for lack of a better word, like left over? Yes, that is correct. So you're going to be looking for the ones that are going to be left over. I mean, that makes sense because those are the ones available to react, right? Yeah. 
And it, yeah, and it's always going to be the ones that are going to be in the outer shell. So mm -hmm. somewhere since it's in that that higher energy level, that's that outer shell. So definitely that four is going to be. And so if this guy isn't full, then if it's not full, then it's going to be available for reacting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops. Okay, so again, your core, this represents your core. And so we can abbreviate your core as an E, and then your leftover one is your valence. Okay, so these are some examples. So lithium, helium will be our core, 2S1. Okay, krypton. I mean, at Krypton, um, calcium. So that's going to be, argon is going to be my core, 4S1. Okay, simple. Yeah, no, maybe. Yeah, mostly. Okay. Okay, so this is just basically showing you uh, some of the uh, valence electrons or the last part components. Okay, so as I said, we were talking about those transitional me metals and how they're a little more complicated. And this is just showing you uh, how we go about determining. And then when we talk about those intertransitional metals, so that's like the F group, right? How they're a little more complicated than normal because where they're located, but it's between the S and the D, that's where the F is going to be located. At. This is showing you what we would expect, what we just talked about, like in the case of copper. So we'd prefer, it prefers filling up that shell if it can fill up that shell, right? By just borrowing an electron. Sometimes it'll borrow two, depending on which which element we're talking about. And you can verify that by using the numbers on that periodic table, so those little numbers. Now, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Okay. So let's see. So here we have gallidium, right? So gallidium in this case is the core is gonna be argon. Then we have 4S2, 3D10, 4P1. So how many valence electrons do we have? Three. We have three because the D shell is completely full. And so that's gonna be considered to be part of the core. Okay, vandenium vanadinium, sorry, um, that is gonna, it's, uh, the electron configuration is AR, 4S2, 3D3. So in this case, how many valence electrons do I have? Five. Five, right? Because in this case, the D isn't completely full, so, those guys are available for reacting so that we can fill them up, fill up that shell. Okay, so this guy is promethium, PM. So the core is xenon, and then we have 6s2 or F5. So how many valence electrons? Seven. Seven. Okay. So here they're all filled up in the core. And then you just have these two since 4S is not completely full because how many does 4S does the F contain? Not 4S. 4F. 14. 14. So we can we can hold 14 electrons. So we know it's not full. We got a long way to go before we're full. So that means that these guys are game for reacting. Okay. 
So you guys, you're feeling it. You kind of good on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how are we doing so. on time? 30, doing good. Okay. So when we talk about ions, right? So positive ion is called what again? Cation. A cation, because it's positive. And then a negative ion is called? An anion. An anion, okay? So in the case of a cation, we're losing electrons or electrons are being removed, right? So under those circumstances, when we're removing electrons, we're always gonna remove from the highest energy level. So let's say we have the promethium. Let me go back, oops. Okay, so this is the electron configuration for the promethium. Let's say we have promethium three plus. So it's PM three plus. So what is gonna be the electron configuration for that? So we're removing three electrons. So it'd be four F four. So it'd be xenon, and then it'd be what? Is that four four? I said four F four. Four F four. That is correct. Because we will remove the two from here first, right? And then we'll remove one. from the four, you get it? So the electrons are taken from the lower orbital energy first. So you take away from the one that has the highest number first. Okay. So this has a six, so you're gonna remove from that one first and then you go to the one, okay. the, the next one, okay? So let's see, let's say we have, uh, let's do manganese two plus. Okay, so electron configuration for manganese. You guys remember? Initially, anyone? Would it be argon in brackets? And then 4s2, 3d5? Okay, so then manganese 2 plus. Struggling with my letters today. There we go. So then you would just have 3D5? No. Okay. Questions, concerns, cash? Okay. Okay, so in the case of uh, an anion, we're adding electrons. And so then that's just, it be normal. So it's just the normal the off, off bar principle where you're just adding to the next, that next level. So, so like in the case of, let's say, So in this case, we have two ways of writing this. One way would be, so what does fluorine look like? What is the...
what is the electronic configuration for fluorine? Helium and baggots. 2S2, 2P5. Okay, so what about F minus? So which one would you take it from in this case if they're both two? Well, we have a minus, right? So are we taking away from anything? Or which one would we add to? Well, you tell me, what are you gonna add to? If you're well, before adding. we went with the larger number, but now they're both. They're both two, two right? But can you add anything to the 2S? Mm. Because how many electrons can the S orbital hold? Just two. Just two. The 2S2, so 2P6. That's right. You're gonna, just going to add to fill up that next shell. How do you pronounce this person's name again? Aspal? Off. Let's see. Off. Ba. Off. Ba. Yeah. That's such a weird name. Okay. Questions, concerns, cash. Okay. Wait, Dr. Henry, you, you have 2P5? Oh, sorry, 2P6. 2P6, oh. See? I was testing you. Any other questions? Good. It's getting easy. Okay, so see those skills. Let's see. We'll give Michaela. Oh, I'm trying to find one that she, okay. So this will be Michaela. <laughs> You're just definitely going to give me the hardest one. That isn't the hardest one. Okay. So, and then we'll do Alex. Uh, let's see, we'll do Matt. And we'll do Marusio. And who else is here? Anybody else show up while I was talking? Jessica, you're here twice. Or on my screen, at least. So Jess, you're gonna do the last one for us? Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Okay. Oh. And you can type yours in the window, Mauricio, and I'll put it up. I want a beer. Oh, I did find the long way actually. Should I put like the short way next to it? I suppose.
Dr. Henry, do you want it the long, short, or both? Let's do short. Short, okay. Yep. Michaela just wants me to work hard, that's all. That's, my, that's the only reason I'm here. Okay. How you doing, Alex? Uh, I'm working on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is what Mauricio has. Oops.
So I have a question, Dr. Henry. Mm -hmm. um, so for this one, I know my uh, noble gas before it is xenon. Okay. Um, and then it would be 6s2. But then with the whole like degeneration thing, it would start at four, right? Okay. Um, so will I have to include everything that's on the four and the five level for this one? Yes, so because you, you technically would be breaking up, breaking up a family, right? Because you'd be breaking up that xenon, right? If you're taking from the, wait a minute, let me make sure I'm not lying here. Okay. Right, because it's three. Uh, so are you sure about this? Oh, no, no, I'm not done with, with it. Oh, okay. I was just asking because um, I did my table uh -huh. and I have 6s2 all the way at the bottom, right? And then we have that five energy level, which is 5s2 and then 5p6. And mm -hmm. then I have the fourth energy level, um, which is... Uh, 4s2, 4p6, 4d10, and then 4f6 because of the um, the numbers on the side. If that makes sense. Yeah, that would do. So that's so here. Let me draw the table so you can see like what I'm talking about. Oh, didn't you had a didn't you have it drawn in the corner here earlier just a second ago? Yeah, I did, and then I deleted it, but I can draw it again. Okay. Me... Hmm. Sorry, you sure about your answer, Matt? So we're doing the long or the short? We're doing the short. Let's see, Alex has. Okay, so Alex. Yeah, is that, is that is a neon? Are, are you sure? Yeah, so it should be neon, right? Or, uh -huh. or, or you could have just written it as argon. Just argon, okay. 
or just written it as argon. If you wrote it this way, it'd have to be neon. 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 Cannot talk today. And so Michaela is saying it's written this way or this way. That's what you're saying, right, Michaela? Yeah, because yeah. uh, I didn't know we were doing it the short way, so I just put it on the side. Yeah. So do you see what's wrong with yours, Matt? Not yet. Not yet. Now you're close, but think about what you put here. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to erase my crap. <coughs> that one, what's wrong with that one? Is it the one level or is it another level that we're at? <laughs> Yes, two. Would it be two S or would it be? Well, I thought it was one S because we had to get rid of two electrons. Yeah, we have to get rid of two electrons. So if we're getting rid of two electrons, the S orbital, right? It's still going to be the same energy level. So remember that first number is the energy level that we're at. So. What energy level are we at in this case? So what would it be without us removing the electrons? 3s2. So it would be 3s2, right? So it'd uh -huh. be any. Any 3s2. 3s2, right? So electrons, if you're removing electrons, you're not going to change this part. You're going to change the electrons that you're taking away. And that's what you did. You took away, actually, you didn't. You took. You took away that number. So remember, this represents the energy level, not the number of electrons. OK, so then I would just, um, would it just be 3p1, Ne 3p1? Nope, because you're going to take away, because p is higher than s. So that's going to be easier for you to get to than the s would be. So you're going to take away the p first. So I should do this guy should go. And then you're going to minus one from here, All right? So then your final answer should be any three S one. You understand? Yeah. Is that your final answer? Jessica? Uh, yes, it, it is my final answer. Okay, so that's correct. Ah, okay. You always give me little heart attacks on January. Okay. So are there questions? So as we were saying for Alex, she could have also written it as neon or S2, I'm oh, sorry, three S2. P6. Or she could have just written it as the argon bracket. Either or. Okay, questions, concerns, staff, credit, piece of cake? Good. Okay, uh, before I let you guys go, I know it's seven o'clock. Clear. You guys need to remember, uh, learn about. So effective nuclear charge, 
So the effect of nuclear charge is, uh, it's basically your Z effect, right? So this guy, Z represents the charge on the nucleus or the atomic number. So what is the atomic number? Or let's say, let's do magnesium. Actually, let's do magnesium, right? Uh, not, yeah, I said magnesium. Actually, let's do let's do sodium. It's eleven. Okay, so sodium is eleven. So that means eleven minus. Okay, so the shielding. Um, so this represents your shielding electron. So it's the total number of electrons minus the number of valence electrons. So if we do sodium, it is, how many valence electrons does sodium have? Just one. Yep. So we write it, it'll be neon. Three S one, so we'd have one valence electron. So then that is going to equal ten. So then we plug that in for our S. This is what S is. So then our Z effective is going to be Or plus one, okay. So, and and basically, this is going to be the uh, the effect that the that it's going to it's going to be the pull on the electrons by the nucleus. Okay, so this represents the pull on the electrons by the nucleus. Okay, so now if we have in a plus. Even though we write it as neon, plus, the way that we would actually look at it is, in this case, it would be helium 2s2 2p6. So in this case, we would have eight electrons. That would be, quote, valence. So then we'd have 11 minus 8, and that equals 3. So then we'd have for a V effective, I mean, our Z effective. So it'd be a plus eight. Mauricio, you were saying why is four F five instead of five F five? Okay. So let me explain that. You're talking about for the S M, right? So real quick, this guy starts at 4F. This here would be 5F. This guy is 3D. So it's shifted by one layer. So this is the 4S, then it goes 3D. And then this down here goes 6S, then it goes to 4F. Because it's shifted twice. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so do you guys get the, the Z effective? Mm -hmm. Okay, no other questions. So then it's beer 30. So I'll let you guys go. And uh, I will see you either at the event tomorrow or I'll see you guys next week.